Hi guys, it's Fen Tony. Gendry is one of the most popular characters in the show, so I thought I'd make a video talking about Gendry and what it means for the future. But there won't be any spoilers for episode 6, so don't worry about that. We're not talking about episode 6 until after the episode airs on Sunday. So Gendry returned in episode 5 and he's been gone for a long time. It's been since the end of season 3 when Davos freed him from Stannis and Melisandre and he started Rowan and I loved the line in episode 5 when Davos mentioned the Rowan. I loved how Gendry has forged his own Warhammer in honour of his father. Remember, Gendry is the bastard son of Robert Baratheon. Robert wielded a warhammer into battle during Robert's rebellion and Gendry seems pretty decent with the hammer himself. He killed two gold cloaks. I know it was from behind and they weren't expecting it but the warhammer itself is quite a difficult weapon to use. You've got to be pretty strong to wield one properly and Gendry is a pretty strong guy. Gendry is a talented smith and there are theories that together with the knowledge that Sam learned at the Citadel they will forge new Valyrian steel. Remember, Valyrian steel and its secret has been lost. You can create new weapons using existing Valyrian steel, but as of right now, the secret is lost and nobody knows how to create actual new Valyrian steel. It seems like dragon glass needs to be forged with steel under extreme temperatures. Maybe dragon fire, which is magic itself, is the only thing that will create Valyrian steel. But that's not really been touched on of Gendry just yet, but there was another important fact about Gendry in episode 5. He met Jon Snow. Gendry introduced himself as Robert's bastard even though Davos told him not to. And as of right now, Jon Snow is officially Ned Stark's bastard. And remember, Ned and Robert were best friends and together they led the rebellion that was known as Robert's Rebellion against the Crown. I think this meeting with Jon Snow is important and it's gonna lead to big things. Gendry is the only confirmed alive bastard of Robert and he might be the last hope for House Baratheon. With the death of Stannis and his daughter Shireen, House Baratheon might be extinct. Gendry may be a low-born bastard, but he is Robert's son, and like many people, I have long hoped for Gendry to be legitimised and become a Baratheon and Lord of Storm's End. A king can make a bastard legitimate, but Jon Snow is King of the North, and I don't think he's going to get involved in the politics of the South. But there is one other person that could legitimise Gendry. Well, technically there is two. Cersei could do it, but we're not going to talk about her. Daenerys has claimed the Iron Throne and even though she's not officially queen, she could legitimise Gendry and then when she becomes queen, it becomes law. Remember, Stannis offered to make Jon Stark back in Season 5. I think once the war is over, Danny could make Gendry a Baratheon and Lord of Storm's End if he bends the knee to her. But why would she do this? Right now we don't know who's actually running the Stormlands, but if Daenerys wants to rule the Seven Kingdoms, she needs to make allies. I think if Gendry does bend the knee to Daenerys, she will legitimise him and make him Lord of Storm's End which would bring the Stormlands under control of Daenerys and repair old wounds. The Baratheon line originally comes from Oris Baratheon who was thought to be the bastard half-brother of Aegon the Conqueror and Robert Baratheon's grandmother was a Targaryen so their two families are connected. But in more recent times there has been very bad blood between House Baratheon and Targaryen Obviously Robert overthrew the Mad King and then Robert sent assassins in Essos to kill Daenerys and Robert seemed pretty happy when Rhaegar's family were brutally killed. So Daenerys was never a fan of Robert Baratheon, she always called him the Usurper and even though Robert commanded the assassins to kill Daenerys, before his death he did tell Ned Stark that he was wrong and Ned was right, no assassin should have been sent to kill Daenerys. So if Daenerys legitimises Gendry, she gains an ally and it could be seen as both houses forgiving each other for what happened during Robert's rebellion and the aftermath. Just like how Daenerys apologised to Jon Snow on behalf of her house for the death of Rickard and Brandon Stark who were killed by the Mad King. Now House Baratheon and Targaryen are allies again with Daenerys and Gendry as their rulers. Gendry Baratheon, that sounds pretty cool to me. Another very big theory is that Gendry who is now legitimised would marry Arya Stark. Arya and Gendry spent a lot of time together in the first three seasons and I always felt that they cared about each other and maybe there was something there but both of them have changed a lot since their last meeting, especially Arya. In the very first episode, Robert wanted to join House Stark and Baratheon through Joffrey and Sansa and they were betrothed but it never happened. So maybe Gendry and Arya do marry and they become the Lord and Lady of Storm's End. Arya Baratheon. Yeah, I kind of like that. But here we go. This sounds too perfect. The War for the Dawn will happen in Season 8 and many big names will probably die. So we shouldn't get too carried away. 
Arya and Gendry marrying and then ruling the Stormlands would be the ending I would love to see, but a lot has to happen before that. And remember, Arya never wanted to be married off to some lord, but she might feel different about Gendry. So what do you think? Will Daenerys offer to make Gendry legitimate if he bends the knee? It makes sense as it's going to build bridges between two broken houses and it will get the Stormlands back under Baratheon rule and in turn under Targaryen rule. Gendry is a lowborn bastard and unlike Jon Snow he never grew up in a castle so Gendry would have a lot to learn. Some lords might not be happy that someone from Fleabon has become the Lord of Storm's End and Gendry will have a lot to learn but I'm sure he's going to have great help and I would love to see Davos become his chief advisor. So leave all your thoughts in the comments below and if you're just finding the channel for the first time please hit that subscribe button and if you enjoyed today's video please leave a like on it. Anyways, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.